Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this virtual tour brought to you by Region 9 and the Kim Center for the Arts with support from the Pretty Foundation. Today, we're taking a trip to Memorial Auditorium to see the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater's The Nutcracker. First, joining us now, we have Val and Mishik Liberatore, artistic directors of the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater. Hi, guys. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ann. How are you? Doing good. You guys having fun out there? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are. Yes. Very busy <laughs> here. Well, tell us a little bit about the Nutcracker this year. Uh, this year, we'll be presenting for the second time uh, the full-length uh, Nutcracker. Both acts, Act 1 and Act 2. Um, we will have, of course, the community orchestra along with guest artists performing the live score for the Nutcracker. And as well as a few uh, tricks up our sleeves this year, some new technical uh, special effects for the audience. So if you saw the show last year, it's going to be, complete, well, not completely different, but a little different this year. And Anne, I wanted to talk about, you know, our cast. We have been working since September when the kids do their auditions to get their roles. And then we start rehearsals right away every Saturday from 11 o'clock until 5.30 in the afternoon. We're rehearsing children, young adults, party scene, parents. Um, it's a really huge production that we put on. There's a huge cast this year. It's larger than last year, so it's been an even more of an undertaking. Um, I think the kids are going to really enjoy getting to see the back stage aspect of the show and all the crew that it takes to make you know everything that we're doing happen we are so excited to see exactly very exciting there's almost go ahead Val my bad go ahead <laughs> oh sorry there's almost 90 members in the cast from ages 5 through adults so you don't necessarily have to have dance experience to also audition to be part of the show so next year in September if you are interested don't forget to keep us uh, check out our website and you can find that information on how to audition all right guys thank you anything else we, we want to know we would of course make sure you're waving to the kids that are watching isn't this exciting that through technology we can make this all possible Yes, I would love to tell them that the shows are tomorrow at 1 and 7 at Memorial Auditorium, and there are tickets on sale anywhere from $11 to $16 to $26, and there's still some great seats available if they would like to come and see the full production after getting this little backstage tour peek at the show. Well, let's get that backstage tour started right now. This beautiful ballet would not be nearly as special without the score, the music behind it. And uh, this year, the Wichita Falls Community Orchestra is going to be providing that score. Rachel Kapelski is with us now. She's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Hey, Rachel, what's going on? We're getting things set up, Rachel. Um, I want to ask all the kids at home, raise your hand right now if you've ever heard a live symphony playing behind a ballet production. It's really incredible to see. Um, Rachel, are you with us now? Can you hear her, Rachel? No. She's saying hi. Hey, Rachel, hi. tell us a little bit about what's going on. Tell her. Um, yes, uh, right now the orchestra is um, on call for 2 p.m. and they're rehearsing a little bit to get ready for our 2.30 orchestra only rehearsal. And the orchestra consists of the Wichita Falls Community Orchestra being supplemented by some professionals that we were fortunately able to hire this year. So we're so pleased to have them and we're really excited to have a really wonderful, beautiful orchestra this year to accompany the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater. Wonderful, and of course, it's it's so it's so magical when you see a live uh, orchestra playing with live dancing. It's such a magical experience, and and as is the case with this show, the Nutcracker really is a staple of the holiday season, and it's it's something that people are really surprised that we have right here in Wichita Falls. It's it's such a neat uh, experience for everyone there. You guys are going to get a neat peek backstage now. We are going to talk now with, uh, let's see. Oh, we're going to see some dance moves right now and hear a little bit more from Mishik. Right, guys? Actually, Ann, it's going to be me. Mishik will be working with those oh, dancers, perfect. giving them corrections and okay. giving them some notes. Um, 
But if you're ready, I can let the uh, musician or the maestro know out there, uh, Jason, and we can start the music and take a quick look. What we're going to see is the sugar plum pot of dough with the sugar plum and the cavalier from Act Two at the near the end of the ballet, and we're going to see what's called the pot of dough. And pot of dough means the dance of two. So for partnering, the dance of two. And if you're ready, we can uh, go ahead and let these dancers show you the sugar plum pot of dough from Nutcracker. Take it away, Val. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check and see. Are you guys ready to dance for them? Yeah. All right. We're gonna go ahead and get in your opening positions. And if Jason, if you can hear me, we can go ahead and start that music for the Sugar Plum Pas de Deux. Crank it, Jason.
All right, weren't they amazing? Those are our principal dancers, dancers, Mr. David Sanders and Nicolina Lawson, as I said, as the Cavalier and the Sugar Plum and Nutcracker. And what we're going to see right now is Mishik is going to give them what we call notes or corrections. As flawless as that looked, as perfect as it looked, believe it or not, there are a few things that the dancers still need to work on. Um, and not only do they get what they didn't do so well, but she also will talk a little bit about the things that did look good. So what I'm going to try to do is sneak a little closer here with the mic, and so we can hear a little bit about some of those corrections or notes that those dancers are getting. Um, present, I guess I'm going to mic. Okay, so I want you to present your foot a little bit more on both of the step arabesques on both sides. Okay. Good, 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 good. That's good. Um, better arms. That was so much better on the, the opening. Um, the passe to the fourth after the last one. Dee da dee, dee da dee, da dee dum bum bum bee. And this one, if it could come, it's really hard with a mic in my hand. If it could come down, I don't know. It just needs to be a little bit maybe out and open. Okay. Um, Do you want to try just the last one? The dee da dum, the one that opens to fourth. Dee da dum, dee da dum, ba da dee da dum, and then open the leg out and yeah, it needs to have a little bit more up to go down oh, instead of straight down into the ground. Yes, yes, and then help her forward, David. That's right. Good. The ponches were were great today. Um, after the Swan Lake and you promenade around, close your foot when you come forward and you come up, so then you can start from the susu to go forward. You're leaving it in passe, and I think I think it would be it's a it's a rest moment. We're going to talk about this note later. Um, back foot on the promenade. I know you're fighting for it, but keep that energy okay. on that back foot. And then just the last pas de shaw, if you could lift your knees just a little bit higher. It was good though. All right, are you gonna, you done with all your notes? Perfect, thank you dancers. Catch your breath a minute and we'll switch mics to you here in a few seconds. So, as you can see, the dancers as flawless, like I said, as that looked, still had a few corrections as well as some compliments to get working on the technical aspects of the dance. Dancers work, these dancers have been working on this pas de deux that you've just seen since September. So for the last three months, they have been working tirelessly every Thursday and every Saturday for at least three to four hours of rehearsal, practicing this specific dance that you just saw. And so in a few minutes here, it's gonna be my pleasure to introduce to you the principal dancer, Miss Nicolina Lawson, who plays the role of Sugar Plum, and David Sanders, our cavalier. And David is a uh, professional dancer, along with Miss Nicolina. Nis Miss Nicolina is a local dancer. She works for the Wichita Falls Youth Ballet as a teacher, a ballet teacher and a modern teacher, as well as she still does a lot of performing, guest performing. David is from the Metroplex. David dances in multiple companies all around the world, as well as here in Wichita Falls and in the Metroplex. He dances in Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, all year round. So in a moment, we're gonna get a chance as they catch their breath to go ahead and speak to them. Um, and I probably need to change my mic over to them. While they are changing, you know, the ballet. All right, has we're going to so get them an earpiece right now. If you don't <laughs> so mind. So many moving me. parts, none of those quite as much as, of course, the dancers yourselves, as you could see. What do you guys think? Give me a round of applause if you think that's incredible. Right? Pretty awesome. Do you guys have any questions? Does any class have a question right now? If you do, have the teachers unmute. And uh, perhaps we can take a couple of questions really quick. Hey guys, how are you? What's your question? This is Jada. She has a question. Hey Jada, what's go what's your question? I don't like where the is. Like how did it Who are you talking and asking? No. We can oh, see you just said. fine, Jada. Just ask us your question, sweetie. She said, how do they know 
when to move on the music. Like that is a very good question, along with the music. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do we have our dancers ready? And I will ask them for you. Thanks for your question, Jada. You're welcome. Hey guys, we have a question from our students. They want to know how you know how to dance and move with the music on beat like that. Okay, well, you know, we start uh, every day with a ballet class, and uh, ballet class is a series of exercises, um, and they're, they're always in time with music. So most dancers know quite a bit about music, um, and we, we learn how to count it from an early age. Um, and then beyond that, you know, it just takes rehearsal. We, the, the choreography is made to the music, so uh, once the choreography is set, we know what comes on what music. You just have to practice and hear it over and over again. We listen to the music a lot. Yeah. <laughs> over and over. How much practice and work does it take you guys to get ready for a production like this? How many hours do you guys put in? Oh, well, um, <laughs> We're, uh, I'm, a, I'm a freelance dancer. Nicolina works here in town. Um, I honestly started rehearsing with Nicolina just one week ago, but I've been training for four months to get into, to get into shape for this. Uh, this is my third year doing it, so you know it's, uh, I've worked many, many hours on this choreography. Um, so we all do a lot of work by ourselves. We do a lot of work. Uh, with everybody else and uh, then when we all come together we just kind of put it together like a puzzle and um, but there's a there's quite a bit that goes into it as I'm, as I'm sure they've explained to you a little bit and Nicolina you look just like a princess you absolutely both look beautiful talk to us about what it's like to be able to be in the Nutcracker and, and, and just how much fun this show is for you as a performer um well, I love Nutcracker. I mean, it's kind of our yearly tradition. If you don't do Nutcracker, it kind of your year kind of feels incomplete. So we, uh, I love it. I mean, especially with all the diamonds and glitter, it's one of the more glitzy shows. Absolutely, yeah, and, and we're, we're lucky as dancers. Uh... Sorry, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry, go on. No, no, no. You're fine, David. Continue. I said we're we're lucky as dancers. You know, we get we get Thanksgiving. And then we get Nutcracker before Christmas. It's it's just, you know, the holiday season is uh, jam-packed full of just celebration and fun, so. And how long have each of you been, been dancing like this? How long have you been doing ballet? Uh, I started ballet at a really young age. I think uh, technique classes started at eight. But even before that was creative movement and everything else for me. <laughs> and uh, I actually started fairly late. I was 17 before I started taking ballet seriously. Um, and, you know, boys get to do that a little bit. We get away with that. But uh, <laughs> um, it's, been, it's been a good time. Well, thank you, guys. Anything else you want to share with our classrooms that have joined us now? Anything else they might not know about what it takes to be a dancer? Well... I, you know, you, you have to get more specific. It's, there's so much that goes into it, so much work. Um, and all anybody usually sees is us wearing our costumes and trying to make it look easy. But uh, there's dozens of hours of hard work. And when you get out there, it makes it all worth it uh, with the audience and the applause, the way you control the stage. So I encourage anybody who's curious about ballet, especially boys, because we always need boys to uh, come check it out and, you know, come experience it. All right, guys, thank you so, so much. We're going to let you in the classrooms take a look thank at you. a little video that we've got of the dancing and, and what kind of goes on with this while we let Val and Mishik get set up to take your questions and answers.
All right, Val, we're going to have a little bit of fun now. We have four different schools participating right now. We have Ben Franklin here in Wichita Falls. Hey, guys, wave at us. We have Henrietta as well. Hey, we, welcome. We have Graham welcome. Crestview Elementary. Hey, guys, and we also have City View that have been watching you guys for Isn't that incredible? Hi. So the teachers, Great. Well, everybody Thank you else so is much for the other schools joining in. So exciting. Oh, teachers, if you want to one at a time, let's actually start with uh, City View if we can. City View, do you guys have any questions? Okay, we have one. Can you hear us? We can. Okay. And okay, you look, you ready? You said, what did you want to say about Oh, that's a good question, Val. Did you hear that? Uh, no, Anne, if you wouldn't mind repeating sure, that to repeat me, it. I could not hear it, unfortunately. In City View, they would like to know what you call a male ballerina. A male ballerina is not called a ballerina. He is called a dancer. A dancer. Okay, so you would be a dancer then. A dancer, yes. And Mishik with you is a ballerina. Yes, the men are dancers. And Correct. Wonderful. The ladies are the prima ballerinas. Great question. Let's take one more from City View, and then Graham, you'll be up next. City View, do you have any other questions? Yep, we've got another one. Great. What's your question? You said, how excited are you about the Nutcracker coming out? Well, I think that's a very good question. Val Mishik, how excited are you guys about the Nutcracker coming out? We are always thrilled every, excuse me, every year for this production. It's such a magical production for families to get all dressed up and come out in the community and see what the dancers have been doing. So it's always a thrill. Um, it's exciting to get to this part of our, our final dress rehearsal tonight for the dancers and the energy is super high so um it is it's always a huge thrill for me it's also very exciting because i get to be a part of the cast as drosselmeyer as you may have noticed on the video i get to be a part of the show as well as a part of getting the production ready so for me it's a thrill to not only go through all that work to see what it takes to get it together working with my lovely wife every weekend and all of these great dancers but to then also get to be a part of that action at the same time so wonderful well let's go to crestview elementary school now how are you guys this afternoon we're great how are you, how are you? It looks like you're having so much fun yes we can hear you what's your question let's talk right there how did those people who dance get picked <laughs> very good question Michik in, in Graham, they'd like to know how the dancers are selected. We hold an audition every September for the dancers to get chosen. We have an audition for our school, which is the Wichita Falls Youth Ballet. So those dancers that are training will get picked uh, in their audition. And then we hold an open audition, usually the next day or right after the school audition, for the community. So anybody in the surrounding communities can become a part of this cast. You don't even necessarily have to have dance training. Uh, you just need to check out the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater website in August to see when the audition is. And we would love to have as many kids show up as possible because the more kids in the show, the merrier. Wonderful. We're going to take- There are lots list. of roles for children. There are lots of roles for children. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. We're going to take one more question from Graham. Then Henrietta, you're going to be up next, so get ready. Graham, do you have another question? Hi. I think we have one more, yes. Wonderful. What would you guys like to know? How, how, long, how long can they dance? How long can they at dance? At what age do they stop? He's asking at what age do they stop? Oh, what, what age do they stop dancing? Have you, you guys haven't stopped dancing, have you, Valor Mishik? I'm 43 years old and I don't dance on a daily basis like I did when I was a professional. A professional dancer works up to seven and a half hours a day in the dance studio along with class. 
Um, but most dancers, it's like an athlete, like with sports. Around your mid-30s and 40s, um, if you're very lucky and you're injury-free, most dancers can usually have a professional career till around then. There are a few that have lasted late into their uh late 40s and beginning of their 50s. So that's if everything stays healthy and you avoid a lot of injuries and surgeries, unfortunately, but. And I actually am officially retired from being on the stage. Um, you know, at 32, I wanted to have children, which we have two beautiful daughters. So I retired and I'm, I'm still very active though, running around backstage, making sure everything is happening. So I wouldn't say I'm I'm just retired from being on the stage in front of an audience. Well, you also move beautifully. We could see that when you were giving the notes. So thank you for all you guys do. Let's go now to Henrietta. Hey guys, capital of Clay County. Do you guys have a question for us? Yes, Say yes, all right. Um, how many days do you practice? How many days do you practice is their question in Henrietta, guys? Yes. Uh, Okay, so our dancers actually, it depends on the age, but starting at four, they take one class a week, which is about a 45 minute class, but up to our older dancers, they're dancing 12 and a half to 16 hours a week to train, um, because this art form is not just about being on stage, but we have to work on the technique and all the different steps that come along with being a ballet dancer. So they're in the studio every single night, usually from five until eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Perfect. We've got uh, one more question right now in Henrietta, then we're heading over to Ben Franklin. Henrietta, do you guys have another question? You guys have another question? Yeah. What? Yes. Just Henrietta was in a pep rally today, is that right? Yes! yes. yes. Well, wonderful! Well, we're glad you guys are joining us now. We'll show you a lot more. Um, and we'll let you guys think of a question, okay? All right, thank so you. for now, we're going to check in with Ben Franklin in Wichita Falls. Do you guys have any questions for the Liberators? Hey, we have two really good questions. One question, wonderful. One question is, how does the dancer work to lift up the dancer, the ballerina, and then we also had from these two kids, how long have they been putting on the Nutcracker Ballet, and what was your question? <laughs> we got lots of questions, Val and Mishik. How do you dance without a script? I didn't quite hear the first one. The, the first one, how does the dance ah, oh, great question. to lift? Yeah. Hi. I, I will feel that one being the guy who has had to lift many ladies over my head. The dancers, the male dancers train very hard in what's called pas de deux class or partnering class. And we work a lot on those lifts. Usually there's spotters at the beginning. And the gentlemen usually spend some time in the weight room lifting weights along with push-ups and other things to continue to work their upper body and to keep their upper body strength. All right. And our next question is... Tell us a little bit about the history of the ballet, of the Nutcracker in Wichita Falls and how long that's been going on here in North Texas. Sure. So the, uh, the ballet theater has actually been putting on the Nutcracker for 53 years. It started back in 1963 with Frank and Irina Powell who are the founders of the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater. Um, then when they retired, it moved on to uh, Patty and Gary Boehm, who had it for 25 years here in the community. And in 2013, we took over, and even in the midst of an ice storm, we still got a show on the stage, and we have been doing it for the last three years. So it, it is really a true family tradition here in this community to have this production every year, December 5th, here at this very historical Memorial Auditorium uh, theater. All right, guys. Well, I think right now what we would like to do is take a look behind the stage and behind the scenes at the orchestra and uh, talk a little bit about that now. Are we ready for that? Um, okay. okay. I think we are. As, as he will turn the camera, you're going to see about 46 members in the pit currently right now. Um, working on, they just began rehearsal for the Nutcracker. They're going over the overture of Act 2 is what we're listening to. They were just playing Act 1 a moment ago. And as you see, these are members of not only the Wichita Falls community, but the surrounding communities. And so we, like they mentioned, we do have some guest artists from the Metroplex as well playing some of the various instruments. 
And as you can see, you've got everything from a harp and strings to the percussions, all the way to the bass and drums and everything. So the uh, orchestra practices every Monday night. They work and rehearse every Monday, just like the dancers. At least once a week, they have rehearsals where they all gather at the university, and they um, continue to practice this score, as well as the artists, or the musicians, their artists, get to also take the time, and they work on their own time at home or in other studios where they practice their score for not only the Nutcracker, but for any production that they might be playing live in. I'm going to let us listen for a minute. I've got a question for the kids in our audience. How many of you watching this right now play an instrument? Raise your hands if you play an instrument. Look at all those talented musical kids we have. Now put your hands down and I have one more question for you. How many of you would like to be involved in something like this when you get older? Isn't that wonderful? This is just beautiful. We'll let you listen a little longer now. Boys and girls, let's give them a big round of applause. Isn't that fantastic? Don't they sound wonderful? So fantastic. Well, we've looked at so many different aspects. We've looked at the dancers. We have looked at the music now. We've taken a closer look at that. We've heard from Mal, or Val and Mishik about their role and how hard they all work for this. So another component is about lighting. Joining us now, we have Lisa Miller to talk about how lighting a show works. Is Lisa with us now? Yes, I am. Hey, Lisa, talk to us about what it's like to light up a show as beautiful as the Nutcracker. Right. Well, I am a professional lighting designer, so I work all year long on all different kinds of shows. But Nutcracker season is very special, and we do have a good time. Um, Probably about October or so, I start working on it, and I have a lighting plot that I send uh, forward to the electricians here at the building and lots of paperwork. And even before I arrive in the building, they go through and they hang all of the lights and to my specifications so that I can convey a mood or a feeling or colors. Uh, so what I do is paint with light um, and use a lot of technology. We have uh, this year something new as uh, LEDs, so we can very quickly change the color of the stage from red, blue, green, and mix all of those colors together just like you do with paint. And so then I go through and I program everything into the console so that someone sits there and they push one button, but I program all of the colors and all of the, the different lights to convey that mood. Y'all have any questions? Question, Lisa, I don't have any questions. It looks beautiful and it really sets a mood for the whole ballet. So thank you for all your hard work. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. 
Another component, of course, is Thank the you. person who keeps things running smoothly off stage so that what is happening on stage goes very well. It's called stage managing and timing when it comes to this is everything. Joining us now, we're going to hear from Wendy Wester with a little bit more. Hey, Wendy. Can you hear? Hi, how are you doing, kids? Everybody wave at Wendy. Hey, Wendy, talk about uh, what it's like being a stage manager. Well, being a stage manager leaves me responsible for many things. You have to take good notes. But one of the things that I do is I try to keep everything organized and notate where all of the different pieces of scenery and props come on and off stage or whether they move in and out and I keep the crew in order to do all the things at the proper time with the music in the show. I have a background in music and dance and started stage managing a few years ago. Mainly I like to do nutcrackers but um, I just simply in conjunction with Lisa, who makes all the cues, you just met Lisa, she was the lighting lady, we cue the show together, and uh, I listen to the music, and call the cues, I give standbys, and then I give goes. My word go is the word they hear that makes them pull the ropes, or move the scenery on and off, or change the lights. So... That's my responsibility. It's a lot to handle, but I think it's something right up my alley. So you're the real boss out there. They don't go unless you say so. Is that right? <laughs> they do. As as soon as the show starts, I'm supposedly the boss on stage. So Wonderful. it is something supposedly. that uh, <laughs> Val and Mishik trust me with, and I like to step up and not have any questions for them. Just do the show as they would like it and rehearse it and give them the best product that we can as a team. All right. Well, Wendy, will you let everyone know? I have a whole team of stagehands working with me. And let's talk, let's talk to one of them and find out. We've got about five minutes, Wendy, if you'll let everybody know um, to talk about the stage and the set. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, Hello, so this my name is Jerry. I'm president. No, please continue. I'm so sorry. Jerry, tell us a little bit about the set pieces. Okay, these set pieces are beautiful. They're made in England, or excuse me, Russia. Uh, in the local here, 378, we have different uh, people, carpenters, riggers, there's painters, people working wardrobe, all kinds of things. So there's lots of different opportunities. You see the lights that Lisa had up here? and windy but well, we hang those lights if you can see over there on that wall the uh the pipe the ropes and everything that really make everything go up and down everything that goes everything that's in this show is run by windy she calls the cues things that uh, move move when she says we put this shit together it's a 53 foot truck load and of stuff I bet that that's makes a this lot show of work. work i bet it's a lot of work for you guys isn't it it takes uh, two days, basically, to move everything in. That's not including setting anything up. That's just getting everything in the auditorium. Wow. Well, you guys work hard to help make this a uh, beautiful, beautiful production. Yes, ma'am, and it's our job to take care of it. They hire us. This is their show, and they want us to make it the way that they want it. That's what our job is, is to make this show the way that they want it. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for being with us, teachers. We've got about two more minutes. So we're going to take one question from each school. If I can get Val and Michigan to join us again, if you guys are ready. And I think we'll start with Ben Franklin this time. Ben Franklin, do you guys have a question? Okay. Okay. All right. Question. Uh, can I show some mouse king and, how, and a nutcracker? Val and Mishik, we're going to ask you a quick question real quick. We've only got about two minutes left with all of our classes, so we'll just do one from each school if that works for you guys. Sure, that's perfect. All right, Ben Franklin, go ahead. What was your question? 
wanted to know if the Mouse King and the Nutcracker were there with you. Do we have the Mouse King and the Nutcracker with you on the stage right now, Michigan Val? Um, we do not have the dancers here right now. Of course, their costumes are here, um, but we have the Nutcracker doll. This is what the Nutcracker looks like when he is all dressed up full size. Um, Mr. Val just ran to get something, so I think he's going to come back to show you something else. But I see in the camera that Mother Ginger is being pushed out behind me. <laughs> and this is a, a big character with lots there's of... The, there's the... There is our... If you want to see the live dancers, you have to come and see how Drosselmeyer's magic turns these beautiful dolls that he makes to give to his nephew Fritz and his niece Clara, and then the magic begins when he does turn them into the live performers or the live dolls. And they come to life during the party scene or the battle scene and the snow. Wonderful. Let's go now to Henrietta. Henrietta, do you guys have a question for Val and Michigan? Yes, we do. Do What's they get ner Do they get nervous when they're on stage? Very good question. Val, do the dancers get nervous when they're on stage? Absolutely. It's all part of live performing. I always tell the dancers, if you don't get nervous, then there's something not right. <laughs> Because it's, you know, it, there's, it's everything you're doing is in the moment. And I, you know, prepare the dancers to understand that it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be mistakes. And that's just all the beauty of live performing is that it's not supposed to be perfect. And the audience understands that. But you have to go out there and I tell them, dance with your heart and just show them what, you know, what the love is that you have for what you're doing all right i'll be honest i've been performing for almost 23 years and it still gets i get nervous for every show it, it never fails well let's hear from crestview elementary now guys you have one question for them what would you like to know do you guys have a question crestview we're almost out of time Let's check in with City View then. City View, do you guys have a question for Val and Mishik? Yes, please. There are some like to know how the bad people stand up on their toes so perfectly without it hurting. Oh, that's a good question. How do the ballerinas dance on their toes without it hurting? Well, it does hurt in the beginning. Um, much to those 10-year-old little girls, they all want those point shoes. And after their first point class, they always say, this actually hurts. And I say, yes, until you get older and you build up the stamina on your toes and the muscles and get the blisters and have them heal and callus, it's going to hurt. So it's always a, that's a, that's a great question because they all want them until they put them on for the first time and those toes hurt. <laughs> well, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us today and showing us all the beautiful things. We want to encourage everyone, if you can, to head out to see the Nutcracker. There are two performances on Saturday. Thank you for joining us on this virtual tour. Thank you to the crew here at KFDX. Thank you to Region 9 and the Kemp Center. Here's the information on the Nutcracker now. Thank you guys for joining us, and we hope to see you on another virtual tour very soon.